and welcome back to another Bob Last Hi. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about shadows. Shadows for realistic painting for me. Okay, as you can see behind me, a couple of examples of more recognizable images. So why shadows? Well, first of all, it tells you where the light source is coming from. Right, left, behind, that kind of a thing. And also, it, it allows you to anchor the object. As you can see here in some of my realistic or more recognizable images, the object sits on top of the shadow. And look at this. You can see where the light's coming from, left to right. Even when I'm doing figures, here I'm doing backlit. So there's still a shadow coming away from the light source. That's important. It's always coming away from the light source. So when I'm doing my larger pieces, it gets a bit, a little more complicated, but still one light source and I get to play with different kinds of shadows. Now that's for more recognizable images. For my realist, no, actually my abstract pieces, not necessarily a light source, you see? So there's no shadow. They're floating around, doing all kinds of fun things. But this is specifically about realism. So there's a shadow, and where's the shadow coming from? Let me show you something that's really fun. So here's a little demo about light sources. Here's my flashlight shining on a ball. So let's see what happens. This is the setup I'm showing different angles. Notice how much fun this is. Just pieces of black paper, great experiment. All right, and I also want you to see how the object sits on top of the shadow. So when the light is on a high angle, your shadow is going to be short. Low angle, early in the morning, long shadows, that kind of a thing. Okay. And even squares. Look at the dramatic angle there. As I move the light around, so does the angle of the shadow. See, always going away from the light source. There's a coffee cup. Even a plastic glass. Now here's something that's fun. Let's make this more of a coffee cup. There we go. There's the shadow there for the glass. Let's put a piece of paper right in here. It starts to really look like a glass. Over here, in the wine bottles, let's even put a little hot spot right there, right in the bottom there. Even more realistic. So now we are aware of the angles. Always the shadow going away from the light source. <laughs> Let me do a, a, a painting that shows you this more dramatically. So this is the effect we're going after. Dark against light, dark against light. And look, I've even shown you where is the light coming from? Pretty obvious here. Good strong shadow. All right, that's the technique. Now let's actually do a painting. You see down here on the table, I'm working on one of my pairs. There's no real light source yet. There's no shadow. It's not sitting down on, on its own shadow. So let's get started. Here we go. Again, this is one of my paint sketches. Let's get the dark down here first. Here we have the dark side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You see? Nice. So I know the light's coming across here. You can see it. I'll even put some light in here just to let me know where it's coming from. But what about anchoring it? That's the whole idea here. Yeah. There it is. And see how it sits on its own shadow. Well, this is a really low light. So we have this long shadow. Softening the edges. Right underneath it though, it's gonna be a hard edge because it's sitting right down on its own shadow. You see, as the shadow goes further away, it gets to be softer. Here's some of that bluishness. This is a blue shadow because the light source is somewhat orange. 
and the shadows are generally, generally the complementary color of the light source. So in this case, the sun is orangish. So there you go with the shadow, it's gonna be slightly bluish. There's the back edge of that table. There you go. Make the shadow just a little bit narrower and softer on the edges. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of a dark spot right down there where it really sits down hard. See, I've really anchored it now. So what we have here is dark against light. I just discovered I'm really painting here with my fingers. It's quicker in a demo like this. There we go. Dark against light, dark. I'm even gonna make it even darker. More dramatic. More water. Really didn't mean to be promoting finger painting, but it's a lot quicker and just as fun. Dark, light, dark, light. So there you have it. The world's fastest course on shadows. Hey, I hope you try this. It was fun, pretty simple. You need to learn this if you wanna do more realistic things. Remember to always anchor your object on top of the shadow, and the shadow usually goes away from the light source, like, duh. All right, hey, I'll see you at the next Bob Blast. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's Bob here to tell you about a few more openings coming up real soon in my favorite place in the world to paint, which is down there in Puerto Vallarta. So it's going to be in January the 26th to the 31st. And then right behind that is another one, February 2nd to the 7th, where we paint a lot. You've heard me talk about it. So sign up online. Just go to my website for more information. It's all there. I'll see you in Mexico. Hi there, painters. Hey, have you ever wanted to meet Van Gogh and Vermeer? I do. Hey, I'm Bob Burridge, and welcome to my Holland Riverboat Cruise. I'm going to Holland. I cannot believe to do a workshop on a riverboat cruise. Nine days of a bliss and imagination and accommodations are spectacular. You know, I did this one in Paris all the way up to Normandy and coming right back down again. I didn't think I was gonna like it. It was spectacular. I said, let's do this again, especially of the accommodation. The crew took care of us. The accommodations, the luxury, were just so well taken care of. The foods, as you can well imagine, the excursions, the entertainment. There's a lot going on on those riverboat cruises, but look where we get to go. We got to go to Van Gogh Museum, Vermeer. We get to see all that history, incredible excursions through those castles, and we get to paint every day. And the meals, we actually hurry back to the lunches on the, on, on the cruise ship. It's a small riverboat cruise just for the meals. Let me tell you, they take care of us. One of my favorite things, I'm looking forward to it, riverboat cruises. That's where it's all happening, small accommodations, educational especially. So you're gonna see a lot of museums, a lot of castles, and do a lot of painting time with me. I hope to see you there.